Well, it's that time of year again. What time of year is it? Friday the 13th. Oh, I thought it was Halloween. God damn it, Jews. <laughs> Stevie Wonder's wife? No. Ha! Neither has he. Ha! Ha ha! Good one. I thought you'd like that. It's a cracker. Hey, Jude, could you pass me up those Friday the 13th DVDs? Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. These here? There Cheers, man. go, man. Yeah. Pleasure to Put be that in there. <laughs> Jude! Yeah. Wait, it, it's really bad luck to be walking underneath ladders. Chill out! Mr. Superstitious. Gee, moan, moan, moan. Wow. <laughs> oh, ah! oh, damn! Holy shit, man, are you okay? Oh. Oh. Told you not to walk under the ladder. I was only Well, you. No, yeah, like no, you no, no. I, no. You weren't helping. You weren't. You weren't Fuck helping you, at all. Ah. Who's that? It's the man who lives in my TV set. <gasps> hey, Colin! Hey, pork scratching. Who's the hippie? Oh, this, this is my friend Sid. Hi. He's a nice chap, a bit odd looking, but I think you'll like him. Er, okay, okay. Does he like horror? Like it. He loves it. He's got hundreds of deep VDs. He even has four copies of The Exorcist, one on VHS. So I think he would make a great co-host. Well, that's a start, I suppose. But I'm not happy about this. I thought this YouTube show was our dirty little secret. So, are you ready for this week's review? Oh yeah, sure. Remind me, what was it again? Friday the 13th, part two. I did tell you last we met. I said, be prepared, make notes, take it in. I trust you took my advice. Uh... Yes. Yes, don't worry, Colin, man. I have all the notes I need. Saved up here in this little noggin of mine. Good. And so, let us begin. You too, hippie. It, it's Sid. Whatever. your friend always like this? Yeah, man, he's wild. Quite the entertainer. What a prick. I don't want to scare anyone. But I'm going to give it to you straight about Jason. His body was never recovered from the lake after he drowned. And if you listen to the old timers in town, they'll tell you he's still out there. Some sort of demented creature. Oh, do. Surviving the wilderness, full grown by now. Stalking. Stealing what he needs, living off of wild animals and vegetation. Some folks claim they've even seen him right in this area. The girl who survived that night at Camp Blood, Friday the 13th, she claimed she saw him. Disappeared two months later. Vanished. Blood was everywhere. 
No one knows what happened to her. Legend has it that Jason saw his mother beheaded that night, and he took his revenge. A revenge that he'll continue to seek if anyone ever enters his wilderness again. And by now, I guess you all know, we're the first to return here. Five years, five long years he's been dormant. But he's hungry. Jason's out there. Watching. Always on the prowl for intruders. Ready to kill. Ready to devour. Thirsty for young blood. <laughs> So, according to the weird and wonderful world of movies, five years have passed since Pamela Voorhees wreaked havoc at Camp Crystal Lake. Five years? That, that's like... A1, A2, A3, A4, A4... Where in the real world it was just 12 months. So, filmed in 1980, released in 81, set in oh. 1985. Well... Then... then that doesn't make sense. No, no, because then... Yeah, don't concern yourself too much with the time frame of these movies. It just might confuse the fuck out of you and keep you lying awake at night in a cold sweat. Just pop your brain out, leave it on the side, and enjoy the tits and carnage kids. Okay, all right. I like the carnage, and I'm a big fan of the tits too. Me too. The Friday the 13th series was originally going to be an anthology of... If Jason ah, was in trouble, he'd die blah, blah, blah. Oh, fuck, you just killed Sid. Fucking blah. For fuck's sake. Can I just do this goddamn review without being interrupted every few seconds? Thank you, hippie. <sighs> Colin takes his horror very serious. Oh, shit. Much like the Halloween movies, Friday the 13th was originally conceived to be an anthology. Much like the Friday the 13th TV show, which ran from 87 till 1990, would end up becoming... But the general public, being the general public, wanted more Camp Carnage at Crystal Lake. No, that sounded wrong. More Carnage at Camp Crystal Lake. Although Camp Carnage sounds like a great idea for a movie franchise. Jots down in Little Black Book, drag queens run amok on a small town during gay pride. What the hell? I'm losing train of thought, fuck. The original film released in 1980, we need to cash in even more now because, well, we can't just leave it as a one and done, so a follow-up is needed. We can't use Pamela Voorhees again because, well, that bitch had her head cut clean off at the end of the first one. So, owing to the last minute jump scare at the end of Friday part one, when a twatty-faced pond weed infested Jason flew out of the lake scaring viewers half shitless and apparently wanting more, well, that's the idea they ran with, let's bring Jason back. And, oh, he never died. No, there was no drowning in the lake. That big old hulking prick has been living out in the surrounding woods all these years, you know, living his best life eating roadkill and shit, and well, apparently he saw his old mama get killed. And now he's pissed. And he's coming for revenge. Principal photography took place from October 3rd and finished in November 1980, and occurred in New Preston and Kent, Connecticut. Not the original location of Camp No B. Bosco, New Jersey, which had been used in the original movie. Special effects artist Tom Savini was asked to work on the film. Man, I love Tom Savini. But declined ah, because damn. he was already working on another project, the 1982 horror movie Midnight. Savini was then replaced by Stan Winston. Oh, Stan Winston's the man. Winston, however, had a scheduling conflict and had to drop out of the project. Ah, come on, man. What the fuck? The makeup effects were handled by Carl Fullerton. 
Like its predecessor, Friday the 13th Part 2 had difficulty receiving an R rating from the Motion Picture Association of America. Upon reviewing the film, the Classification and Rating Administration warned Paul Hager, an executive at Paramount, that the accumulation of violence throughout the film may still lead to an X rating even if substantial cuts were made. A total of 48 seconds had to be cut from the film in order to avoid an X rating. Steve Miner, associate producer on the first film, believed in the franchise going down the route of Jason being the big bad in the franchise and would go on to direct the first two sequels after the original's director and producer Sean Cunningham opted not to return to the director's chair. Miner would use many of the same crew members from the first film while working on the sequels. Adrian King was pursued by an obsessed fan after the success of the original Friday the 13th and purportedly wished her role to be as small as possible. Though in the documentary Crystal Lake Memories, the complete history of Friday the 13th, it was stated that King's agent had asked for a higher salary, which the studio could not afford. <laughs> Actor Warrington Gillette played Jason unmasked at the end of the film. Stuntman Steve Daskowish, also known as Steve Dash, was credited as Jason's stunt double, but played the bag-headed Jason throughout the rest of the film. And yeah, this is the one before Jason gets the infamous hockey mask that makes its first appearance in part three. Here we get Jason with a sack on his bonds. The film in general is a solid slasher flick, full of atmosphere and kills, not the most creative in the series, but still passable, and builds on the Crystal Lake lore, extending the story for the next installments to come. This is for some reason the one I find is rarely mentioned or not talked about as much as the others in the series amongst the horror community and, well, people in general. Although in recent months the movie, In a Violent Nature, has seemingly given Baghead Jason a nod in the killer of that movie's look. So for me, not the greatest entry in the series, but it's certainly not the worst of the bunch. So, what say you two dorks? It's certainly about a five and a half out of ten for me. Sid, come on, let's have your take first. What are your feelings on part two, and what score are you giving this? Oh. Ha. Huh. Ooh, the well, brain's ticking over. I'm going with Colin on this, but a little Ooh. bit lower. <gasps> really? I didn't expect I'm that. I'm going for a five out of ten. Really? Damn, I thought mine Holy was low. Holy shit, man. You shock me. Well, it's a... Bit of a run of the mill horror film. He's not wrong. Dude, can you hear yourself talking now? A run of the mill horror. It's a classic. It's not brilliant. It doesn't really do anything different to what a normal slasher at the time would do, does it? No, not at I all. I don't know, man. It, uh. Yeah, and, uh, you know. Well, sets up the future installments, introduces Jason as the killer going forward. And it's not the Jason that we've come to love, is it? Yes. Nah, dude's got a sad Not yet. Head. I mean, he's, he's, he's basically a wimpy little normal-looking bloke. Sounds like you a bit. Um, you, you know that bit? There's the bit with... Oh, what's her name? Um, Hippie brain freeze. Uh, Ooh, hello, what's this? Uh, Ginny. Ginny? Oh, did you just IMBD that Mr. Horner? Uh -huh. no? uh, yeah, I saw it too. You did. He did. Yep, I didn't. Did. I, I didn't. Look in his phone. I didn't. It, fucking amateur. You looked on your okay. phone, Hippie. Continue. Where Ginny has got the chainsaw and she's going towards Jason. Yeah. And he backs off like a wimp. What would now, you I do? I want to see Jason, you know. Unstoppable Jason. No, what are you on? Ah, uh, okay, I'm with Sid. You know. I think what Sid is trying to say is that the character of Jason isn't fully realized in this. He does look like some average dude with a bag on his head. And it is the smallest version of Jason we see in the franchise. Warrington Gillette, one of the many to play Voorhees in this, stands at six feet tall, and not the biggest of builds. And yeah, he is more human-like here. He squirms and shies away when confronted. Whereas in later movies, he towers above victims and appears like an unstoppable killing machine, which gives him more of an edge, a clear and present danger. So yeah, I know what you're saying.
and there's not really that many memorable kills, and not many of them. There's a few. Yeah, okay, eight is it? And a dog. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so five five out of ten. Fine. You're wrong. Your turn, but... Jude. Make your point. Okay. Well, I have very fond memories of this movie, and it was the first Friday film I saw when I was a little boy. How sweet. One Friday night, I was sat drinking my beer. Drinking your beer? How old were you? Seven. Seven? Yeah. Yikes. But I was only drinking stubby bottles back then. Okay. Anyway, the lights were all out, and there was a storm brewing outside. The branches of the tree that sat in our yard were tapping against my window pane and a light rain swept across the town like a dreamy mist. Good grief. Please, can you drop the sentimental bullshit and just give us your score out of 10 and why? Thank you. Okay. So when Sid said there are no memorable kills, I beg to differ. What about when Jason impales the couple banging on the bed? That is yeah, a great yeah. kill, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the spear through the bed. See? And you said no yeah, all right, all right, all right. memorable kills. You're an idiot. And wheelchair boy yeah, with a machete. The, the machete. The yeah, that, that's that's. He comes yeah, down yeah, down the yeah. steps. See this fruit. That's a good kill. Yeah, yeah. Clue, Colin. You See, bought him in. Stands as a great slasher on its own merits. If you don't know what is yet to come in the franchise, it stands up on its own two feet. Okay. Good point. I think you've proven your point. I think so too. Cool. So I'm gonna give it a juicy old seven out of ten. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it, bitch. Right. I'm out of here. I've heard quite enough for one night. Until next time, see you in your wildest nightmares. Gore whores. Colin, out. Well, thank you for sticking around. Those who made it to the end. And if you enjoyed this, then why don't you try, like, sharing and subscribing to our little horror channel. Maybe this video will get 200 views this time. <laughs> and on that note, it's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good night. Good night. Haunted halls with stories untold. Dark allure, a sight to behold. Ghastly visions in the dead of night, flashing lights, a spectral sight. Unearthly sounds fill the air Welcome to our twisted lair We've got the dark corner of Studio 666 Is the place to get your horror fix Sex, blood, and guts galore If that's what you're into, then come and see what's in store Colin felt the mist of midnight himself Gives reviews straight at the shelf Along with his trusty sidekick Jude X, well let's just say that he's twisted and sick It's horrific a bitch We're out to get you tonight Step inside this haunted ride Neon screams where shadows hide Monsters lurking, ready to bite in the chaos of electric light We bring the fright the fear ignites Exposing secrets in cold moon night